Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Curtis Thompson. I am a professor and extension weed specialist uh, here in the agronomy department at Kansas State University. And today we are talking about um, the importance of atrazine uh, and its use in our uh, crop production uh, aspects of, of weed management. Uh, we, we continue to see um, the, the herbicide atrazine as others uh, being targeted and uh, uh, consistently being uh, reviewed. Um, but I think I'm, I'm very confident in, in all of the research that has been done over the years and the, the very tough scrutiny that has gone on with each and every herbicide uh, that we can feel very confident uh, that we are doing all we can to uh, keep our food growing in this country safe for the, uh, for the public. Atrazine uh, at one point in time was observed perhaps in some of our uh, watersheds. Uh, currently uh, strategies have been implemented and just checking the uh, watershed site at this point uh, all levels of atrazine are uh, in compliance with, with EPA and we currently don't have any watersheds with, with the atrazine restrictions. The concern that I have as a, a weed scientist and basically speaking for especially the corn and, and sorghum growers that utilize atrazine, uh, it is still a very key component in our weed management uh, systems. Uh, over the years we have developed uh, atrazine resistant replacements, but to be honest with you, all of our atrazine resistant placements work better or are basically synergized with the use of atrazine. Now the overall pounds of atrazine used in, in weed management uh, has declined over the years. I think we're, we're using it more efficiently, but it's still that essential component uh, both with pre-emergence and post-emergence weed control applications in corn and in grain sorghum. And so if the day were to come when atrazine was removed from our weed management toolbox, uh, it would be very devastating and increased costs. And I, at this point, uh, couldn't guarantee that we could do a adequate job of weed control uh, without the uh, use of atrazine in these two crops. And if we continue to look at atrazine and uh, critically scrutinize it, um, if for some reason it was taken from us, uh, they'll only move on to another herbicide. And of course the most uh, probably commonly used herbicide in our systems beyond atrazine would be glyphosate. Uh, and clearly we've also seen, you know, uh, attacks on, on glyphosate, but again, I think we have research in place and can document uh, its safe use and the fact that there is uh, no risk in our crops and in the food that we're producing based on atrazine or glyphosate. Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Lyons from Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center here in Manhattan, Kansas. Daryl was one of our patients that we did about seven months ago. I dug trees by hand for years and years and years. In the process, I wore out my rotator cuff. But when I learned about this process, I thought if there's a way to get rid of this pain, then I, then I want to do it. So we did it and it worked. I'm not going to go out and dig trees with a shovel anymore, but, but I can do the things that I want to do now. 
Well, it's been very gratifying to help people with their painful joints and other uh, entities. And it's been especially gratifying to be able to help people who I know and have worked with and known for many years.